and we should be live. Hi, everyone. Hi, Nat. Let's see you here. Hello. Ask hello. Hello, Yudai. Hello, hello. Hello, Sean. Sean and Kevin. Pratamesh, uh, Mohammed. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people today. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Is the audio okay? Say yes, uh, no. Perfect. I see you both. Perfect. Excellent. Hello. Hello, Kevin. Nice, nice, nice. This will be great. This will be great. Let's see. Let's see. Perfect. Can you hear both of us? I think yes. I think we can start. Yes, yes. Everything is okay. So perfect. perfect. Okay. Excellent. So perfect. Glad to meet you both. Hey, Pranav. Hey there. Okay. So let's get started because today I think we have a lot of stuff uh, to talk about. Uh, and today uh, we have uh, Nat Miletic from Canada and we'll talk about uh, how to get started in freelancing as a web developer, but I think this can also apply to other fields. And also WordPress, SEO. So how are you, Nat? It's yeah, pleasure, I'm finally, pretty good. Yeah, finally, finally we, we talk each other. We, we can know a little bit uh, better. So. That's right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I uh, watch your videos all the time. And obviously, we've been connected on Twitter for a while. So, sure. you know, glad to be here. Perfect. Perfect. I had, I mean, I think it's our friend of Xaba, Xaba Kissi, I think. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, let's get started. And I want to start with your, with your story. I've collected all the, the questions on, on Twitter. I have also many questions. So, uh, let's start with, with your story and then uh, we'll see. Okay, perfect. Hey, Michael. Yeah, yeah, perfect. 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 Uh, Michael is on fire on, on chat. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, perfect. yeah. Perfect. perfect. Great, great to see Michael. So, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll start with a little bit of a background. I mean, uh, for me, you know, I started uh, with, with HTML and CSS back in, actually, CSS, I don't even think CSS was around in those days, in uh, 98. So, um, I was 13 at the time, you know, we, um, I took a web development course. Um, it was focused mainly, or I think just on HTML in those days. And, uh, you know, I made a few hobby sites and stuff. And back in those days, it was great because there wasn't a lot of competition, like not a lot of people were making websites. And, uh, you know, so I started getting, so I was really fortunate uh, to have some uh, connections in terms of, um, you know, having some family members with businesses and stuff like that. And it was totally different in those days because, again, not a lot of people were making websites. So, you know, you'd have, you know, uh, adults and, and business owners say, hey, you, you know how to make websites? You know, can you make me one? It's like, sure. <laughs> so there I am, you know, a little kid. I was in junior high and in high school when I started doing this. And I kind of got the bug, you know, from that point. And, um, you know, I started exploring more programming languages. Um, for me, um, JavaScript was next. Um, and, you know, I, I uh, didn't pick up CSS until later. Um, but, you know, I pursued that in high school. So I went, you know, started to do more programming in high school. I went into C++ um, and wanted to, I kind of got the bug, you know, back in when I was, when I was a young kid making websites, right? So, you know, when I started career-wise, I started to, have, um, you know, I started to kind of go more into the C++ and database area. And I actually, my first job was um, in database development. So I was an Oracle developer. So I did some C, I did some PL SQL and Oracle and uh, .NET and all kinds of different programming languages. But I always kind of kept up with the uh, web development stuff because I always liked that more uh, because it's a little bit more, you know, creative and, uh, I always liked running my business, you know, more than than doing just like, you know, sitting there coding for somebody else. And uh, so I always, you know, I, I started up, I, I opened a official business, Clio websites uh, back in 2007. And, uh, <laughs> and I, uh, you know, I was, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <not kidding. laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I ended up, um, you know, I ended up opening that business and focused mainly on on web development from the start. So, you know, back in those days, um, I wasn't using WordPress. Um, I was using mainly just HTML, CSS, JavaScript, 
uh, Bootstrap when it showed up for responsive websites and just kind of, you know, was making making websites um, using those languages for a while. Um, I didn't start getting into WordPress until probably 2016. Um, and, you know, I just kind of fell into it because um, I started getting clients that were like, hey, can you maintain my website, you know, or can you make some changes to my website? And I'm like, sure. Um, you know, what's your website? And they'd send it to me and it would be like WordPress. I'm like, ah, I hate WordPress, you know? (laughs) So I go in, play around with it, make some changes. I'm like, ah, this is stupid, you know? And, you know, kind of move on. And then as I started doing more and more with it, like more clients kept coming up to me and saying, like, can you maintain my website? Can you make me a WordPress website? Can you do WordPress and WordPress, WordPress, WordPress? And I'm like, well, you know, I better learn it, I guess, you know, because I have all these clients that are using it. If something goes wrong or I need to implement something new, I'll, um, you know, I'll actually, I'll have to, I'll have to invest a little bit more in it and, and learn it a little bit more. And as I started learning about it, I realized, um, you know, I thought it was just for blogs. Like I thought it was just, you know, when I was first exposed to it back in 2011 or 13, I believe it was just used for blogs. It was really simple and it didn't have a lot of functionality. And, um, you know, that was my exposure to it. And, um, but then I realized, wow, you know, it has so much more functionality. It has so many more features. It's so extendable and it's, it's great platform. You could do so much with it and it's a huge demand, right? Like, I mean, there's uh, 43% of websites run on WordPress. So, um, you know, somebody asked if, if you should learn it, you should definitely learn it. (laughs) It was a question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I so think that's because... basically a little bit about me, a little bit of background. Sorry, Francesco, maybe I went Thank too you, long. Na- Thank you, Nathan. Welcome, everyone. Um, today we have uh, we have um, a lot of people. Who, uh, so Angelo is asking, who who are your common customers? Small businesses or privates? Maybe this is a question more related to to freelancing. But mm-hmm. if you can answer before, because otherwise I'll forget about this. Yeah, question. of course. No, yeah, I mean, small scroll. businesses. Yeah, mainly small businesses. That's what I try to target. Um, I, I I have some like what would be considered, you know, medium sized businesses. I work with a couple of universities as well um, that are fairly big, but those would be considered kind of bigger, but uh, mostly small businesses. And I try to target small businesses because um, I like those a little bit quicker project. I, uh, I like projects where I can make a difference. Um, I don't like particularly working with bigger companies and dealing with the bureaucracy and the red tape and all that stuff. I like to kind of keep things moving and keep things, uh, you know, uh, quick um, and where I can make a difference. And I think I can make the most difference helping out people that are just getting started with new businesses that need a website or people that are, you know, that want to grow through their website through SEO and, and stuff like that. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So I, I mean, um, a lot of questions. So we can also start start from them. And on Twitter, mm, sure. there were there were a lot. I've seen a lot, a lot of questions about WordPress. So if we can talk about this, and then we. Get, but I think that WordPress and freelancing they are connected about each other. And then I want mm-hmm. to talk about the SEO if you want. Uh, yes, of course. Later. And yeah, we have also Shaquille. Uh, hey there. Oh, hey, Shaq. Hey there. Yeah. And uh, happy to have you here. Yeah, yeah. so um, we had many. So is WordPress still worth learning? I think your answer. Um, Definitely. Uh, maybe there are some more technical. Yeah, I think this is interesting. Is there any alternative to WordPress which is better than WordPress? Or maybe it's a different one. Has WordPress plugins uh, zero down websites at some point? So, of course, there are some. Uh, point of view. Yeah. So what's I mean, your, what's um, your point of view? Not not that I'm aware of. Like I mean, there might be something. I, th- I think a lot of different platforms like may may do a, may do certain things better than WordPress. But as a whole package, um, I think I think I, I don't really think you can beat it. I mean, again, it depends. Like if you're looking at e-commerce, you know, something like Shopify might be good as well and might do e-commerce a little bit better, maybe or not better, but maybe it's a little bit more streamlined for e-commerce than than something like WooCommerce and WordPress would be. But again, you know, when you look at the whole package, you know, do you need a easy to maintain website that has like a CMS functionality that you can extend? 
and that you can add anything to basically. Like, is there a platform like that, you know, without doing a lot of coding, without making a huge investment in that platform? Like, is there a platform like that? I don't think so. I mean, I could be wrong, but um, I think that's the beauty of it. Like you could start super simple with the super simple informational website with the blog, and then you can extend it from there. Do you want to add e-commerce functionality? Do you want to add SEO features? Do you want to add uh, whatever, whatever you want to add really? Um, it's easy to do like it's easy to extend. It's also scalable. So I mean, in my opinion, I don't think there's anything that has all of that in a single package um, or not yet anyways. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, I like what you say that it's easy to start because uh, I am on Twitter and I think the uh, one problem, of course, I'm saying something generic, but sometimes uh, really developer developers i think that they are like sometimes i like the the people the old people in the bar so they, they are just we have these bar, bars in italy it's like a pub <laughs> and so basically you just stay there all day long just discussing about which is the best framework <laughs> which is the technology and meanwhile there is someone who is working yes <laughs> so exactly i think yeah. about, i think this maybe could be i think uh, about that all the time too yeah analogy. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh Twitter's great for that, you know, for getting a lot of uh free advice and and resources and learning opportunities and stuff, but it can get a little overwhelming as well because somebody's always like, "Hey, have you tried this? Have you tried that? This is awesome." You know, and then people are like, "Oh, okay, now I have to feel pressure to learn this next thing," you know. So like, you know, for me personally, you know, I don't know any JavaScript frameworks. Um I know a bit of JavaScript, I know a bit of PHP. Um, but just enough to do what I need to do with uh, WordPress and for my WordPress clients, right? So, I mean, don't feel pressure to, like, learn everything and to know every framework and whatever. Uh, like, it's it's impossible to keep up. Yeah, and Pick something and get good at it. Yeah, and I just, I just want to say that uh, I've seen a lot of people also asking me uh, that they feel overwhelmed. They don't know when to start, when should they start freelancing, how much, one year, three years. So, yeah, so maybe I can ask you this, uh, make you this question. So when is the right moment to start with freelancing and in how much time you can start? So basically mm-hmm. the, the, the main topic of this uh, of yeah. this interview. So how to get started and how, because uh, you, you don't have someone who just call you and calls you and say, yeah. now, now you are ready. So of course, of course. How can you do that? Um, so, I mean, you know, when I started, it was totally different. I think it's much easier to get started now than it was when I started. You know, when I started, there was no platforms, you know, there was no Upwork, uh, Fiverr and all those platforms. Like, those didn't exist, right? Um, we had to go door to door. <laughs> we went to businesses and knocked on their doors and said, hey, we noticed you don't have a website. And, you know, do you want us to make you one? And they're like, who is this kid, right? Like, get out of my store. <laughs> kind of thing. You mean you mean literally door by word or no? Yeah, or yeah, virt- literally. Virtually. No, no, there was no virtual. Yeah, there was lucky, no virtual. Lucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Knock on the door. Hi, I'm so-and-so. And oh, I was yeah. in high school. And they're like, who's this kid? Like, you know, get out of my store kind of thing. So, um. So you had to kind of grow some thick skin. So it was different. So, I mean, the way, again, I'm fortunate. I know I'm kind of like, you know, privileged when it comes to that for sure. Um, In terms of having, you know, my first website was uh, for my dad uh, who had a business and needed a website. So, you know, (laughs) that was an easy contract for me to get. Um, I got some other family members as well that had businesses that, you know, saw what I was doing and said, oh, this is great. Can you make me one? And then I had some other, you know, friends that had businesses as well, or their parents had businesses and said, hey, this is great, you know, and and that's how it started. So after like two or three contracts, it got easier. And it was mostly through referrals in those in those days. And I think you could still get started that way. I think also what you can do. Um, you know, a lot of it's this is probably not popular advice on Twitter, but, you know, a lot of people, you know, just want to like quit their job and go head 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 first into freelancing. You know, um, I don't think that's the right way, especially if you already have a job like you can do a little bit on the side, just kind of get a feel for it, get a project or two, see if you like doing it. You're not going to feel as desperate to find a contract and to find work. You know, um, if you don't have money coming in and if you're not employed already, I know, again, that's not an option for everybody. Not everybody already has a job. Some people have to go into freelancing or want to go into freelancing. 
uh, from the get-go, that's totally fine. But all, all I'm saying is there's two paths, right? You can do, um, you know, you can do it on the side as well as you're starting out um, and kind of build it up. Uh, so you have a, you know, a regular stream of clients um, that you can kind of rely on to kind of get you going uh, as you grow or, you know, or you can just start as a freelancer. There's nothing wrong with that. I think now there's more opportunities than there were when I was um, when I was starting because the marketplace is also global. Um, you know, you have tools like Upwork and Fiverr. I know a lot of people don't have luck with those, but I also know a lot of people that, you know, started their way uh, that way, uh, started their career that way. So, I mean, there's a lot more options. There's a lot more opportunities. The marketplace is global too, right? Which wasn't the case when I started, right? It was all, it was all local businesses basically. Um, yeah, this is interesting because, for example, you had the, the opportunity to start uh, a lot of year ago. Uh, I have another question. So, for example, for people who maybe they, they, they want to start now, do you think that it's still worth? Do you see some difference maybe from some, someone that you have, you have seen, like start uh, starting doing freelancing now or not? There are also some, it's, is it harder or is it easier? Uh, for my, in my opinion, it's easier. I think there's a lot more work, um, and I think there's more opportunities again to, um, you know, utilize some of those platforms, um, you know, where you can kind of pitch your services and see if anybody bites, right? Um, so it's, I think, I think it's easier. In my opinion, I think there's more work. I think, you know, lots of businesses already have websites, but that means. You know, those businesses also want to maintain those websites and want to keep adding features to them and stuff like that. As you know, you know, nobody launches a website and says, you know, OK, it's done. <laughs> I never have to touch it again. Right. Um, so, you know, so I think there's more I think there's more opportunity. Uh, definitely not less is the way I see it anyways. And and I, I like this approach because someone will say like I, I want maybe it was better to start 10 years ago, but uh... This is not a valid point. <laughs> and, uh, no, yeah. no, yeah. If you enjoy doing something, I mean, it's always worth it, right? Like, I mean, if, if that's what you want to do, I, I say, you know, go for it. I think now, mm. especially, you know, like I said, it's a global marketplace now. So you have a, a bigger opportunity to work with people all over the world. I, li I like that you say um, a bigger opportunities and not big uh, competitors more maybe there are also more competitors but i like your mindset that you say also more opportunities of course yes yes, yes exactly yes. and I, i love that yeah Michael. yeah that's it uh, perfect so uh, if you uh, let me see if i have other questions about uh, wordpress uh, now uh, i would like to to talk about seo if we yes. if we want just for 10 minutes or two hours whatever you whatever you prefer <laughs> but um, I, i i honestly yeah. have a, i have one question because i'm not an expert in seo i've used them them in the past but uh, for example I, now i have uh, the i've created a community and we have a simple website and we have not done much uh, about seo but uh, still it's it, it uses some keywords that uh, Uh, I've been recognized by, uh, by Google. So um, to really get started, so to really for, for really uh, noobs and new buys, uh, which are the things that you, uh, where can, do you think that you can help more and where do you see the most of the problems? Because I would like to talk more about the problems that mm -hmm. I see that you're smiling. Because I think that the, maybe it's, it's easier for you to, to see what people do wrong instead of maybe giving some <laughs> advices <laughs> yeah yeah nice. for sure i'll tell you all about doing it wrong because i was like learning as I was, i was trying to rank my website for seo so seo is fascinating seo is a great thing for any web developer to know i think the basics uh to understand because seo is also a vast industry just like web development is Um, web development has, you know, different niches and areas. Like you could be a designer, you can be a, you know, backend dev, you can be a front end person, you can be a WordPress person, you can be a React person, you can be a whatever, right? SEO is the same way. So SEO has its its own uh, niches and areas. Some people specialize in more kind of technical SEO. Other people uh, specialize in more kind of like content marketing and promotion. 
um, other people specialize in like outreach, for example, there's all these different areas. And uh, it's a fascinating field. Um, if anybody wants to learn more about SEO, I have uh, a lot of resources in my pinned tweet and my profile. So you can, if you check out my Twitter, you'll see in there that uh, there's basically, there's lots of, uh, lots of resources to learn SEO. So the way I started with, with SEO is I wanted to um, rank my website or, or uh, ri rise my, my own Clio websites um, uh, organization up the Google rankings for certain keywords. So just like with anything else, just like we always recommend for, you know, web development to say, you know, just start, start learning, do a project basically, right? SEO, same way, do a project, right? So what I started with is I, I said, you know, it would be really nice to, to rank for uh, uh, Calgary web design. Calgary is the city where I live. You know, it'd be awesome to rank for Calgary web design, right? should be easy and i'll just change the title of my website i'll put some keywords in there and it should it should rank right a little did i know that that was like you know that that was the way people were doing it back in 1999 probably right so the industry has changed vastly <laughs> so so it didn't work yeah. <laughs> i am i am old, i don't know you but i'm old, old enough to remember also the search engines before google because the yes people yeah, yeah. The, the, People think that Google has been the very the very first uh, <laughs> search right. engine, but it was not. I used um, uh, Alta Vista, Virgilio, other search engines, yeah, and I remember true. I remember that uh, there were people who uh, just put like the, the title many times to get yes. more SEO. Maybe yes, yes, you, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. No, we are we are revealing our age. I think. Yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, so it's funny though because some people still think that works, you know. So I get questions like that all the time. It's like, hey, what if I you know, add a meta tag, meta keywords in my HTML, like, you know, and just like add a bunch of keywords in there. Is that going to rank me? And the answer is no, <laughs> it's not going to work. So, um, yeah, so basically that's how I started. I started doing SEO more for um, to try to rank my own website or that's the way I, I, I learned about it is uh, through trying to rank my own website for certain keywords. The other thing was, you know, the natural progression, I would say, of web development or websites, if you're working with small business clients, is as soon as you launch their website, they're going to say, what about SEO? You know, now I want to do SEO because I have a website, so I want it to rank. So I was always either referring them to somebody else or I was like, you know, saying to them, well, just do Google Ads, right? Um, you know, you're better off doing Google Ads. And in some cases, you still are. But, you know, there's, there's the whole... Um, you know, the, 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 there's a vast difference. Like SEO is also paid advertising is also considered SEO. So there's a paid SEO. There's also organic SEO that we call where that you can do to, you know, improve your website. So it's more SEO friendly. And of course, you know, there are people that just specialize in creating Google ads, uh, Facebook ads and things like that. Nothing wrong with that. It's, it's just a different way of marketing a website. So I ended up, um, you know, I ended up uh, uh, learning that way. That's how I, I started, Francesco. I started by trying to rank my own website for, for certain keywords and then um, learning different concepts as I went. Because again, it's a vast thing. You can just, you know, you can just, we could just talk about SEO uh, all day if you like as well. So it's uh, definitely a, a vast uh, uh, oh, subject. Yeah, I'm available if you want, if you want, not, or maybe we'll go make another episode. We'll make another I, one, yeah, if you want, yeah. I think I need more time because I have another live stream mm. after this one, but uh, yeah, yeah, maybe exactly. we can dedicate uh, uh, one episode. So if you want uh, me and Nat to make an episode to just uh, say this in the chat, uh, convince <laughs> convince him more than me, because for me, <laughs> for me, it's okay to do a super long live stream, but uh, yeah, 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 so perfect, perfect. perfect. Nice, nice. Uh, Hey Daniel. Hey Daniel. Hey Daniel. Moka. Daniel Moka. Yeah. Perfect. Um, okay, Nat. So um, let's get let's go back to the to the central topic of this uh, mm -hmm. this one because I, w I wanted to ask you about SEO, but for my because I, we are working on this website for my for our community and Graham is mm -hmm. also there. So it's asking mm -hmm. for ask Jeeves, ask Jeeves, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I remember Ask Jeeves. I remember Altavist. Uh, yes. Yahoo. Yahoo was huge. Yahoo. Yahoo. I forgot yeah. about Yahoo. Yeah, <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is a, this is a, they were a huge. They were the Google before the Google, right? Uh, but you know, yeah. yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so about freelancing, um, what, um, what do you think that is maybe the, the most important skill, for example, to have as a freelancer? Because now I can also consider myself a, a freelancer, a contractor. I still don't work, uh, even if I got uh, many, many offers of, of co- going back off a full time. Uh, but I'm still on the contractor side, so I'm trying to resist. It's very, very, even if that's hard. Uh, yeah. So basically, for example, I I knew nothing about freelancing. For example, both of my parents uh, are teachers, so for them, freelancing is something strange. It's something in in, in Italy, the freelancer are also is seen a bit strange from the other people. They all um, and people usually. Th- they always uh, try to chase like a full-time job. Uh, in Italy, if you have a full-time job, you are a hero. Otherwise, you are evil. This is the <laughs> basic idea. I, I tried to, to synthesize, but uh, that's it. Mm-hmm. So basically, I made this jump, and now everyone is happy because now I'm working four times than, than before. But at the <laughs> beginning, uh, see, I had also my parents saying, mm, are you sure about that? Yeah, now, but now I see, I see all the advantages. So yeah, can we? Um, what do you think? Maybe it's uh, the most important. Oh, sorry, I think the most uh, important skill. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw somebody put in uh, marketing, and that's definitely one of the most important skills for sure. But I think what's even more important is um, um, delivering. You know, it sounds kind of corny, but like delivering uh, solutions or projects. You know, like in a timely manner, like executing and doing things that you said you were going to do when you said you were going to do them. So if you tell a client, we'll have your website ready in two weeks, make sure it's ready in two weeks, make sure you're focused on that project, make sure you've done the best job that you can for each individual project. I think that's the most important. I don't think because, and I'll tell you why. I mean, if you do that consistently, you're not even going to have to market. Like I didn't market for, years like i didn't market for probably until two years ago i just had steady stream of referrals coming in because you know when you're able to execute projects and you're able to give the clients what they need in a timely manner and they're happy they're going to refer you to other people you know and that's one of the if you ask any freelancer you know where their clients come from or any business any agency if you ask them where their clients come from they're going to tell you it's referrals, like, you know, a large chunk is going to be referrals. And then the other chunk is going to be everything else. So that's what I would say the the most important thing is. The second most important thing would be um, marketing, for sure, getting a a steady stream of clients coming in. Um, Because, you know, uh, referrals will only take you a, a up to a certain point, again, depending on what your aspirations are, like how much you want to grow your business, marketing is going to take you to that next level. It's going to make you scale and it's going to make you grow. Right. And, um, and we could talk about that a little bit as well, like how you, you know, market yourself and how you grow and what the different ways of marketing your business are. But I would say the most important thing, execute projects, do a great job on every project. Don't half-ass it, like make sure it's the best work that you've ever done every time you do a project and make sure that a client's happy and uh, mm-hmm. and and that's how you'll get referrals. I think that's the most important thing. Nice, nice. And uh, I uh, I think I think this is very it's great, and uh, especially if you want to work in freelancing for decades, if you want to work for for thirty years or maybe uh, uh, until you want basically because maybe we don't have a hard stop at sixty. And, yeah. Um, so this is basically I like what you say that you try to like uh, drop the, the the basics and then you let uh, people basically market yourself for free, but it's not really free. Is that mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. show them how you work, and then people auto auto refer you. I think in that case also people will be happy to refer you because they are yes. proud that they have worked. For example, if you you work for me or I work for you, and if we get something, if you get something um, um, uh, good, I'm super happy to refer you to someone else. Because I'm, yeah. I'm proud that I've worked with Nat, and I of course in this case, yeah. 
Exactly. Exactly. I think that's the biggest thing. It's like, you know, people are going to want to um, do other people favors by saying this person is great. I know somebody for you, you know, who's going to take care of that problem for you because they, they're comfortable with the work that you did and, and, um, and, and they'll kind of spread the word. I think that's the most important. And for me early on, that was the hundred percent of my clients were coming that way. I didn't start doing SEO until a few years ago. I didn't get on, I did, I wasn't on Twitter either until a few years ago. And so, you know, I think I started Twitter maybe a year and a half ago or so, or maybe two. Yeah. Well, a year and a half ago, let's say. So, I mean, yeah. I wasn't getting, um, you know, around, around there. I wasn't getting, you know, any leads through those channels um, before. So for me, it was mostly referrals, you know. Nice, but I, I, yeah, for example, I I also uh, see this a strong referral, referral. Maybe if you are not uh, super active, uh, like 12 hours per day on Twitter, I see that there is a strong reference to what you do. So this is totally deserved. Yeah. Of course. Uh, such a good programmer, he automates his marketing, which is uh, <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. Like shipping projects with time boundaries it's important for not losing the trust of your yes. client the trust i think it's uh very important yes. toward uh, to care not just about freelancing also about relations but uh, <laughs> also about also about freelancing of course of hey course. everyone let's see yeah uh best experience was working together with other freelancers who do they yeah. share their customers with me when they ask for the things i was specialized in Uh, when I was about to start freelancing, I also checked some 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 tips uh, myself on Google. So, which are the best tips for freelance? And one thing that I've noticed it was like uh, work with other freelancers mm-hmm. because you mm-hmm. work with other people like you, and uh, this yeah. is a good uh, good thing to do. I I yeah, uh, that was that was kind of like a learning for me as well a few years ago. Then when I realized, like you know. A lot of even a lot of the local agencies in in Calgary here that I uh, work with and even on Twitter, I was surprised like, you know, other agencies were like referring work to me like they were sending me work, you know, and I'm like, well, I'm thinking, why don't you do it? Is this like a troublesome client or something, you know, that you're sending in my way? But I think if you think of it from that perspective as a collaboration, a lot of, you know, a lot of agencies are slammed like we're 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 that way now where you know, I don't think I could take another project. So if I did get something, I would gladly give it to somebody else to do. And um, it's all about that collaboration. And, you know, you'll notice one of the things I didn't mention about what's important in freelancing, I didn't mention any, you know, uh, technical skills, um, because I feel like for, I feel like the, the marketing side and the sales side is a little bit more important than the technical skills, because, You know the technical skills you can you can also work with other freelancers you don't have to learn everything right so if i had a project that required um some uh, you know uh, javascript uh, advanced knowledge i would probably just work with another freelancer who is an expert in that field and and get and collaborate with them on a project versus trying to learn a new framework like i would i would never think that way to be like oh okay, I've got this project, I'm going to learn, I'm going to start learning this new JavaScript f- framework because I need it for this project, right? So thinking more like a, like a business versus uh, an individual is also, you know, an important thing. And it kind of touches, it's, it's related to this uh, thing that Tia mentioned around, you know, having the, working with other freelancers and collaborating. Yeah, and for example, I've seen this, uh, which is interesting. When someone asks you something, instead of saying, yeah, don't do that, you can, in that case, you can recommend someone else. Yeah, and this exactly. Is, this, is, this is great. This is, I, I always do this. If I know that someone is more proficient than me in something, which is basically 99% of the times, I always refer to, refer to them, of course. Yeah. And uh, Michael says that basically he's redirecting to you all the traffic. So if your phone... Keeps Michael's ringing. Great. That's right. <laughs> Basically, it's Michael. Michael's fault. So maybe you should add at, at, at least yes. let him let him alone d- during weekends. Yeah, maybe you should yeah, add, yeah. Maybe you refer to him. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Michael's great. Yeah. Nice, nice, That's nice. awesome. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, and uh, I've been in a Twitter. I don't know if you. We can also organize that Twitter space if you want. Because, for example, I've been in a Twitter space some days ago, weeks ago. 
it was about like freelancing versus uh, uh, full time job. Like it was like a Street Fighter two f two fight. Uh, so it's mm-hmm. like uh, freelancing versus uh, full time. And I seen that people they were more happy about freelancing. I see. Yeah, statistically, I can say that um, um, people usually are happy about freelancing, and usually people usually are not happy about full time. Of course, there are exceptions, but mm-hmm. uh, this is my statistic of what I've seen in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. on twitter so maybe i don't know have you ever worked uh, for yeah yeah for employee? sure yeah 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 that's okay. how i started yeah so i mean so, mm-hmm. you know i think i think it's there's advantages and disadvantages to both i think you basically you know uh, i think freelancing is a little bit more glamorous when you're starting out um and when you've been doing it for a while um you know then you might say well you know do I really need, you know, to, to make myself available all the time and to kind of like work around the clock to grow my business? Or would I be happier doing a nine to five and just like, you know, finishing up at five and not thinking about work until the next work day, you know? Um, so it's, I, I wouldn't say one's better than the other. I think it really depends on the personality. You can be successful in either. Um, depend depending on what your passion is. If you're more into you know having your own freedom, um, you know uh, uh, doing your own thing, managing your own schedule, and all that kind of stuff, then you know then freelancing might be for you. If you want a little bit more stress free living and knowing you have a paycheck, steady paycheck, you know um, every two weeks, then there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's actually, you know, it, it's it's a nice kind of um, a n- nice perk to have because you, again, like you don't have to think about work. I I, I don't know if you saw that um, tweet. I don't know who did that or it, it was going around like there's a meme like, oh, you know, I quit my nine to five. Uh, so I can work 24 hours as a, as a business person <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, yeah but... <laughs> It's yeah, but true. <laughs> yeah, but every every meme has something something true behind behind. That's right. Of, always. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. For 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 example, for example, to, today I I woke up at 4 a.m. I started working. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I know. I know that sounds crazy. After a coffee, of course. And then and then at 11 a.m. I went to the to the barber. So for me, this is re, is great. I remember that great. I remember that when I was working full time, I also had a, a side a side, a side project on each Saturday. I could not not go to the barber like for for three months. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah, that. of course. I hated yeah. that. And now, for example, today I went to the barber. But this is this is an example. I didn't want to make this example now, of course. But I love this, for example. For me, yeah, the flexibility not, is great for me. Yeah, hi Julia. For me, it's not a problem to wake up very early, but I want to be free maybe in that hour if it's a sunny day. If, for example, it was today. Yeah, so of course. Just yeah, no. There's uh there's you know, but advantages and disadvantages to both for sure. So I mean it's it's not for everybody, you know, people definitely have to think about that, you know, um when they're starting out their career. I mean, you could try out both and see see what works for you better, right? Um, I mean, um, you know, the the business owner life is, especially when you have a family and kids and stuff, can get a little hectic um, because you know you do feel like you're always, um, you know, you're always hustling, you know. Uh, versus a nine to five is like, you know, again, you clock out and you're good. You don't have to think about work until the next next day. So yeah, it but- really depends. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for example, I had this idea also in 2017 that I wanted to do exactly this. Maybe not related to social media because I was not a social media person. I know that that sounds crazy now, but it was like more like working like like you you have done. So you work uh, word of mouth, you work with some for someone, and then the, then I got this uh, offer. For example, as a full time job for the European Space Agency. So I I accepted that. Maybe one good thing that I did is that I I've, I've never uh, stopped. Uh, to, to chase to chase my dreams uh, to think about doing freelancing in the future so I was going uh, so it's I think it's more about a the mindset there is nothing wrong in working nine, nine to five if you have a honest job uh, you have my respect anyway it's more about the mindset because uh, 
I honestly think that maybe working for 40 years for the same company, it's a bit boring. I don't know. Maybe it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. This is my just my thought. So it's okay maybe to use a part of your life, especially if you have a family, if you have bills, you have mortgage to pay. But I think it's more here. It's more about, okay, now I'm doing this. What can I do more? Mm -hmm. Because I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of yeah. people, also a lot of my colleagues, uh, uh, I don't know, like, like you, you just feel comfortable it's okay for you and you stop maybe to be a little bit ambitious in a positive yeah of way. course yeah there's that for sure yeah i think for me like just like you I, i think the social media aspect like i didn't realize there's this huge community you know because uh, i was doing this on my own i didn't know anybody else i have a couple of buddies that do the same thing you know as me like the word wordpress uh and and other kind of web web development uh companies and stuff and You know, those are the only people I kind of interacted in that space. And then I like got on Twitter and I met a few people. Uh, I can't remember. Kevin was one of the first I met and uh, Jack Forge. I was like so excited that Jack is close to he lives in Edmonton. So he's about 300 kilometers away from where I live. Um, which for us, it's pretty close, like Canada is so vast, right? So this is like the next city over. <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, cards, it's, even, it's even closer. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so we, you know, we, I, I discovered this great community and everybody was so, so, uh, you know, friendly and helpful. And, um, and I was just like hanging out and just talking about things that I'm doing, things that I kind of learned and things that I kind of worked on and whatever. And then I didn't realize there's this whole, like marketing aspect of it where people started like hitting me up for work and i was like well you know that wasn't my point um so i kind of fell into it accidentally i um i remember getting a few dms from somebody like oh um i'm having a, a problem with my wordpress site like i'm getting this error or whatever and i'm like thinking well Oh, okay. And I, I messaged the person and I go, oh, okay, well, have you tried this and that? And like trying to help them out with it. And they're like, no, no, like, do you do this? Can you just like do it for me? You know, what's your hourly rate? And, you know, can you fix these things for me? And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. And you know, so then I started working with people like that uh, through just like random DM messages that I was getting. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, I wasn't, didn't realize or my intention wasn't to like promote my services or or go into it to you know promote my business it was just more like talking about the things that i'm doing uh talking about wordpress um you know talking about different projects that that we did and stuff like that and then um you know it just kind of just started getting referrals and to a point where now i think i get you know probably two solid ones every week um just through Twitter, you know? So it's been a great opportunity. Um, it wasn't my intention going into it, but it's like, it's been a great byproduct. How about, how about you, Francesco? What do you think about that, the whole Twitter thing? For me, it has been a game changing because uh, uh, I had not this uh, past experience as a freelancer. So for me, joining Twitter really changed my life really mm -hmm. uh, because uh i was working happy kind of happy for a big company big environment a uh, lot of friendly people so maybe it was a, a little a bit too much of commute like three hours per day but uh, i was not aware of that so it was fine for me um and then after joining twitter and after the pandemic everything changed i've totally switched uh, my, my mindset uh, totally so It was really, uh, for me, it has been the social media really changed my, my life in a, in a better way. Maybe I've tried to, to find a sense also to, to them because it's, sometimes it's hard to give um, a sense to your social media. You just uh, watch things. Now maybe I have a bunch of followers, but in the beginning, it's not that, that granted, of course. You are just mm -hmm. one person sitting somewhere on a computer and you are just typing stuff. And uh, yes. Of course, you're not yeah. an expert at all. I'm still, I'm not, I'm way far. So think about <laughs> earlier. So for me, I've been lucky enough, enough to start to switch my mindset, my mindset. And now I'm super happy. So, and I'm now yeah, I'm here awesome. also talking with you. So I'm super happy because, uh, yeah, yeah, this is not a joke because now I can connect with the people that I want. I have the time. Yes. It's uh, 4.30 p.m. here in Italy. And I'm talking with you. If I would have, been working full time i was still uh, still working on some bugs uh, yes. somewhere 
Of uh, course, yeah. Uh, nothing wrong with that, but uh, yeah, I like this idea to put the the Q in the bracket in the bracket. Uh, I don't know who did this for first, but it's it's super easy for me. So I, I'll steal this. Thank you. Pratamesh is asking maybe for the second time. What is the right amount of range to quote to your very first uh, your your very first freelance client? Yeah, so I mean that's a great question, kind of hard to answer. I mean without knowing, um, you know, more about what type of project it is. But let's say it's like a simple, you know, five page, you know, informational type of a website. Um, the way I would do it, I, I think it really depends on, and this is where a lot of people struggle, like in terms of, um, in terms of uh, pricing, is like who, you know who are you pitching to, uh, in which which area, like which geographical area. I think you know if you're working with the business in India, they're probably not gonna expect to pay for a project as much as somebody here in Calgary, for example, right? So you have to be aware of that. I think a lot of people get frustrated by that because they say, well, you know, I charge 5,000 bucks for a website. If you can't afford it, too bad, right? And, you know, fr yeah. clients frustrated because they're like, wow, that's astronomical. The freelancers frustrated because they don't feel like they're getting their, you know, time's worth, their money is worth. Um, yeah. And, and every, nobody's happy, right? So... Were you gonna say something? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no. I just want to say that uh, I've seen, I heard this uh, even before. And uh, what can, we can say is that it's not our fault. Is the like different countries have different incomes? I think it is not yeah. not Nat's fault. Maybe we should be all all the same. It would be. Maybe yes, the, it would be easier <laughs> for sure. It would be easier <laughs> for a, us if I there think. was a standard price yeah, for everything. It yeah. Be, but it's no, not, it's, it's not a, um, we can fix the world. Yeah, <laughs> just, that's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. That That's the reality. I mean, you know, for me, to, so when I started, the way I um, started doing it is I started looking at some of the other agencies on in my area and seeing what they charge. So that was the biggest, the best indication for me um, to find out how much I should charge was basically um, looking at the other agencies and what they were charging and figuring out what works for me for the amount of time that I'm going to invest in a project. Um, there's other ways as well. You can, for example, say it's going to take me, you know, a month. Um, I'm making, uh, you know, I have a project. It's going to take me a month of full-time work. I make 5,000 bucks a month right now. Therefore, I'm going to charge 5,000 bucks for this project, simplifying it, right? You could do it that way as well. A lot of people talk about this yeah. value-based pricing. So for example, for me, I can make a website, WordPress website in two days, no problem. Um, somebody, it might take them a month, right? Am I gonna reduce my price because I've only worked on it for two days? No, I'm not gonna because I'm using more advanced tools. I'm using, I'm reusing things that I've done for dozens of other projects. I probably can still make a better website than a beginner. You know, they can spend a month on it. I can spend two days. I can still make a better website. So all of that experience um, is what the clients are paying for. So um, I think the best way to start, again, is do some research. Um, you know, how much does a website cost in Delhi? Type that into into Google. Find out what, that, what others are charging and price yourself that way so that you're not totally off base, um, you know, in that particular market. Uh, once you get more established and once you have lots of clients where you don't need the work, like, you know, you're not like desperate, then you can charge whatever you charge. Um, you know, when you get more advanced, people are not going to be like, well, you know, I'm going to, um, people aren't going to just take any, you're not going to take any project. You're not going to say hi, say yes to everybody either. So you're going to basically, you know, be more selective and you can be firmer on your pricing. But when you're starting out, yeah, you'll need to be a little flexible to get some projects under your belt and and get some experience and build up your portfolio and and your your customer base. So so it really depends where you are. It depends on the project. Depends on your area. There's too many variables to say two thousand bucks or five thousand or five hundred or whatever. It's it's kind of hard to answer. So I would say you have to do more research in your area and kind of stay competitive, uh, especially if you're starting out. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, thank you, Nat. 
Akash has a, has a problem, but I think this is a this is a good problem. What do we do when we have too many clients? So congratulations. I already accepted yeah. one, but a few days into the contract, I got a better offer. Options, what should I do? So you could do two things. Uh, you could do a number of things, actually. You can do, this is again, yeah, good problem to have, like Francesco said. You can grow by hiring people, um, which is what I did. So you can hire somebody else, teach them the way you do things and get them to help you out and start making uh, and take out, take on more than one project at the time. You can schedule them as well. And you can say, um, you know, I'm not available right now because I'm working on this other project, but I can start your project in a month. And most of the time clients will be okay with that. So there's no reason uh, to, to say no because you have too many clients. Um, there's also, and now this depends on, again, if you're busy with new project builds or you're busy with maintenance, for example, other recommendation is to look at, you know, do you, and this is kind of bad to say, but, you know, do you have any clients that, you know, are kind of a pain, like they don't uh, pay you on time or they don't pay enough or they're always complaining or they're always like needy or whatever, you can shed some of those and take on these new ones instead right so that's another thing you can do yeah, so there's same. yeah there's a few there's a few things i mean it's a good problem to have so once you get to that point that's like those are like your growth pains you know so basically you know you can start by outsourcing or growing your company and uh and and, and growing that way yeah and i think for example the outsourcing is a great thing that you can do you can also provide a job to someone who would be maybe super yeah. happy because we are Maybe you are at different positions. Maybe you have uh, 20 years of experience. So there is uh, someone who's just going to start for them just uh, to collaborate with you. It's, uh, it's great, of course. You yeah, know? of course. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a great way also for them to learn, of course. Never underpay yeah. your, 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 the, the people you work with. But uh, if, you, if you have a deal with them, I think it's, uh, it's a great way to start. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I've, um, you know, I've, I've gotten a lot of people from Twitter to help me out with uh, different projects. So, I mean, you know, when I'm in that situation, I'll usually, you know, I work with Jack for, for a time. He wanted to learn a little bit of freelancing and stuff. And so we were working together on some websites. I taught him some WordPress and stuff, and he was just off and running with it, you know. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of ways. Again, it's like, you know, a great problem to have. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, maybe we need to to think big. Maybe if you have a lot of clients, because cl client clients are not uh, not stupid, they come to yeah. you because they have a reason for sure. Of course, they are, yeah. they're gonna pay. So uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, this means that you are doing uh, already good, Akash. Maybe yes, we yeah. should we should always uh, value our time because uh, I don't know. If it's also happened to you, there are some periods maybe where they have maybe less work, and then and then suddenly, <laughs> ten people at the same time they call you. I don't know. This is yes. something maybe. This is I don't know if this is a course or a blessing, but uh, this is <laughs> what I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I love this queue with the brackets. It's super easy for me. If you make a question easy, yeah. that, uh, yeah, I need to, <laughs> to make this a standard on my channel. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, would you would you have you hired the interns? Yes, lots of interns. Yeah, I've hired lots of interns. They're great. I haven't in the last little while just because we've been so busy. I like to have interns do meaningful work, and I like to kind of guide them because I feel like it's a you know learning opportunity for them. And so, um, you know, I I'm not gonna do it unless I have the time to invest in them. And uh, because it's a bit of a two way street, you know, so I think lately I haven't had a lot of those opportunities because we've been so busy. But uh, definitely I love hiring interns and I love um, teaching people things, you know, um, how to get started and things like that. So for sure. Always. Yes. Yeah. I have another fast question. How do you find the interns? Do you hunt for them? Do you look for people who are actually looking for a job? And for example, do you use a specific platform? Yeah, no, I actually partner up with a few uh, local universities and, and colleges. Mm. 
and they they send me like every every semester every work term that they have they send me a list and uh and i go through it and so they they're they're always looking for opportunities for their students mm -hmm. so i mean that's another way i've also had a few people i haven't hired anybody that way but i've had a few people on twitter also ask me like if they, they, they nice. can like they'll work for free you know mentorship opportunity and all that stuff but by the way i'd never i'd never get a free i'd never hire somebody for free i'd always pay students so i mean for me yeah great. i don't think i don't think it's on i think it's unfair <laughs> to get free labor out of somebody and not pay them so um yeah and I, th I also think that if you pay someone they are always more motivated than maybe to work. Oh, of course just... yeah 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 i have i have a, a one one college i forget the name here a local one that has like free they, they do free uh, internships for the, they're not paid for their students other colleges have paid ones and you know like i always just give those students a check on my own because you know just because it's unpaid it doesn't mean that you can't give them like a, a bonus or a tip or something like that so i mean yeah 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 i think maybe yeah one thing is maybe if you collaborate with someone for example now we are doing like a, let's say like a free collaboration but once it's okay but working like for one month for the same oh, person yeah. without getting paid you start getting frustrated 100 percent i think of course of course if yeah. you are not if you are not like yeah if you have if you don't have a real reason, maybe because you're getting maybe a super offer at the, at the end of the month, it's okay. But if you're just doing an intern internship, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, I uh, mean, you know, if, if you, and, and I think of it this way, like, you know, if you have an intern and they're working for free, basically, if they get some other opportunity on the side to do something else paid, they're always gonna, you're always gonna be lower priority, right? Um, yeah, of course. For, to them, so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, I think it's e even if you don't get paid like f like a full time job, but at least to have the idea, we also have a donation from Dennis Ivy. Amazing! Oh no Amazing. way! We made it. Not... There you go. Nice, nice. Let's let's share it. Let's share it. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> no, you did all the work. You can you can no, have no, the donation. No, it's no, for no. your for your channel. <laughs> So you, Thanks, it's, for, it's, for, it's for the lighting because I have like four lightings. There you <laughs> go, exactly. I have, I, there you go. I have high electricity bill. So yeah. Yes. Uh, great suggestion, guys. Thanks a lot. Uh, but the clients pay a premium for our experience. Uh, in outsourcing to someone else who might not have the same experience. Yes. So I think so... that uh, I think this is this is great. If someone wants if they really wants you, so you just raise your price, Akash. <laughs> I think totally. <laughs> Go totally. for that. Go for that. Um. So so there's a few things. I mean, with that <clears throat> statement, like you're you're um. <clears throat> there's a th two ways to do that. I mean, if you outsource to somebody or um, you know through your company, then you're 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 still responsible for that project. So you you need you need to guide them. You can't just say, hey, here go do this. Especially if they're not an expert in that field and you're just kind of looking for extra help with the project, you can't just say, here here you go, figure it out. I would say that you still need to guide them and you're still responsible for that project. So, you know, your experience still plays a part and you still have to make sure that it's executed properly. You're not going to hand off something to the client back and say, hey, here's a project and it's a piece of crap, right? So you're still responsible for it. That would be different than referring them to another company. Then you're kind of washing your hands and you're not really doing it as yourself. You're saying, I've got this this friend, you know, Francesco, he's, he's going to take care of it for you. He's great. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's off, out of your hands. Then you, you, you know, obviously you're not gonna um, have any any benefit from that directly. Maybe financial benefit, but you're um, again, it's it's out of your hands, right? If you're too busy. So there's different ways to do it. If you want to grow as an agency and you want to start outsourcing to other people, you definitely need to think of it as you're responsible. So those people are kind of delivering the project to you, not to the client. Um, so you're still you're still responsible for for getting a good outcome. Perfect, perfect. So Dennis is asking something. Do you remember your first three customers? Yeah. If so, I don't think it's, it's that old, right? <laughs> Can you tell us how you connected with them? 
joking of course yes yeah, so i mean um <clears throat> so it's funny I, again uh, i think maybe dennis wasn't here in the beginning um, when i talked about that um but i i was a, a bit fortunate i'd say kind of privileged dennis even um because you know i had some family members that had businesses that they wanted me to create websites for and so in those days as well i was you know, I, there weren't a lot of web developers. I started like in the 90s, you know, as a kid. And then I kind of grew my business as I was in high school and college and stuff like that. And I mean, um, you know, I just got a few family friends first. Um, my first client was my dad's company. My second client was a really good friend of mine. His mom opened like a spa. So I, I created a spa website for her. And then, you know, those two were my first my third one was actually a big one um that i got referred through a friend who was working at a local university here in town and he said you know there's this big project i can't do it because i work here already as an employee so can you do this project and that really kicked things off for me so it's a big university here in in town and then that led to a bunch of other referrals so i didn't do any marketing in the first few years at all um i just basically it was all referrals word to mouth i had other friends that were starting businesses or new people that were starting businesses and you know got got me work that way as well um i was getting a little bit of traffic through my website <clears throat> but not until much later so for me it was like 100 percent referrals for the first few years and the first three customers were just you know friends family friends and, and referrals Perfect. And uh, I hope that you have, at least you have a uh, lifetime access to the TESPA. I think. I hope, <laughs> I hope right. at least you have that. Uh... <laughs> nice. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, see, then it's just a, uh, he outsources all the time. Like Nat said, we are still responsible for making sure we deliver what we promise. Yeah, of course. It would be nice mm -hmm. for me to outsource also some of these interviews, but I, you need to put your face in that case. But uh, it's yeah, uh, when you can uh, get help, let's say. This is just a, a sign that you are doing good. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, for me, um, two game changers. Like one is Twitter, of course. Um, the other one is, um, is SEO. So um, SEO brings in i would say so so now i'll i'd say probably 50 to 60 percent of referrals uh or existing clients because i have a lot of like maintenance type contracts as well which i i really like and then um the other <clears throat> 50 to 40 percent is you know a mixture of my website and twitter is where the other uh, referrals come from and the the seo actually both of those i wish i started much earlier um seo i was kind of brushed off uh, to the side because i you know wasn't as interested or i thought it's too vast and complicated and didn't kind of feel like learning it but um as i started learning more about it i kind of realized the power of um of having um having a strong seo basis that you know can bring in clients basically on its own like while you sleep right so a lot of the clients that come through my website are actually the best kind of clients because the 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 things that i'm targeting are very specific so you know i'm targeting wordpress websites wordpress maintenance plans you know WordPress tuning, things like that, that I like to do. And those clients land usually on my website through those pages and contact me through those pages. And so they're seeking me out and they need something very specific. Yeah, I like what you say. So basically when you do freelancing, maybe it's super, maybe it's very hard at the beginning, especially because you, you I, don't, yes. I, don't know, I don't know you, but for example, I, um, during my high school, they never taught me about freelancing. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> this, I don't know if this is a real issue about school. Both of my parents are teachers, so yeah, I know what I'm, I know what I'm saying. But it's uh, the system of the school that I think it's a bit. Uh, they had some some problems yeah. because uh, it seems I, that they try to push you in so in in that, yeah, in career. that direction, yeah. especially in Italy. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh wow, Michael uh, donation! That's wow, awesome. Michael. That's amazing. Thank you so much. 
<laughs> I don't know. I could donate. Now you know. Great talk. Please spit know. that and get both a beer. I will do this for you. Okay. Also, great, Matt. Thank you, my God. Thank, Thank you, so, you so much. much. Thank yeah. you so much. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah. So I think it's uh, it's in the school is uh, with the school also is a problem. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I was saying that it's very hard in the beginning, but once you get some reference, some word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And you start getting clients, say, as you said, you can decide yeah. who you want to work with. And that's, uh, I think that at the end of the day, we still need to work for someone in some ways. There are very few people who really work for themselves uh, yes, yeah. in, in, a, in, a, in a hidden place in the mountain. But I think you can choose maybe what you want to do. Maybe you are a little bit more free but of course you need to work for someone to get to get some money if you don't yeah. want to steal the, to, don't it, want to steal them of course but it's interesting uh, that that's an interesting thing you said um like about you know your schooling and your parents being teachers and stuff and i think that has a lot to do with the way i kind of pursued this early on as well is that you know my whole family is like everybody had a business everybody that i know was like entrepreneurial you know and always kind of like you know, that was like, that was like the holy grail, you know? And I think, um, you know, I grew up, I, I moved to Canada when I was 13. I uh, lived in uh, Yugoslavia in those days and then Serbia, um, you know, up to the 90s. And, you know, it was a communist country uh, again. Like it wasn't like, oh, you're going to start your own business and be an entrepreneur. That wasn't a thing that was like looked up on, you know, when I was growing up, it was like, you know, you get a job and you're a director somewhere you joined the communist party and you made it right like that's it <laughs> totally different system so when i moved to canada there the you know the whole north american thing is more like you know uh, values i think the entrepreneurs a little more and that whole aspect and i think part of the reason why you know my family and a lot of other families moved here was because of that you know like again like my uncle has a business and has had a business you know forever my dad and uh, as well and almost everybody I know you know had some sort of a business um, and had that entrepreneurial thing I mean I you know I did a lot of other things as well other than web development I had other businesses as well and so that was always kind of in my nature like I always uh, thought that you know that was something I wanted to do so you know it's it's funny that you mentioned that I think it's like a it might be like a cultural thing as well, where, you know, in, in certain countries, um, it's more valuable to be like high up in a company, for example, versus like having a successful business. And I think in North America, it's like the other way around um, where a lot of people are, there's a more entrepreneurial thing going on all the time, right? Interesting, interesting. Yes, yes. I can confirm it. In Italy, it's strange, strange. When I wanted to do <laughs> freelance, you, yeah. When I quit, yeah. When I quit my job and boss said, "Like you will see how much hard is that." Instead, now, <laughs> now I, I've also worked with him. Work with him after after quitting my job. So this is also mm -hmm. a perfect good sign. A good sign. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thank you again, Michael, and also Dennis. Uh, it, you really made my day. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, I think this will be the last question because in 20 minutes I have another live because I have a, a live stream every Friday, which is a don't deploy today, but come to Francesco's Q&A. So it's just one hour that I give. I want to give to people to ask me questions uh, about basically everything you want. So let's uh, answer to this if you want or not, and then we will make an episode two, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. You. Yeah, yeah, of course. Perfect. So, okay, last one. So... A lot of uh, Pratamesh. A lot of clients also want you to maintain their website, and especially for WordPress websites, there is a recurring cost for hosting and domain. So, do the clients also pay yearly? How to handle that? Yeah, yeah, great question. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I love WordPress is because there's always um, stuff to be done to a website, and usually people that want to invest in WordPress um, want to keep investing in their website. It's not like a static Webflow website or HTML website that you create and you launch it and see you later, you know, maybe talk to me in a year when you want something changed. Uh, with WordPress um, clients, you need to be upfront with them uh, when you're seeking out those clients and when you're working with them, I always tell them you're going to have some ongoing costs. Um, minimum is, 
uh, one to two hours a month for us to go in, do the updates, test the website, make sure everything's working correctly. Uh, hosting and domain, they pay for that as well. That's not your cost. So, you know, I prepared them for that ahead of time and I'm really upfront about what it's going to take and how much it's going to cost them going forward. If they're not comfortable with that, you know, I wouldn't work with them anyways. So um, it's not something, you know, again, nothing wrong with doing like one off type of projects, but it's just not something that we do. So I would usually, you know, tell them to seek out somebody else. So I think one of the main advantages of WordPress and why I like it and why we pivoted and do like, you know, 95% WordPress websites now is because of that exact reason, because you have that recurring revenue and those people those clients are typically more interested in maintaining their websites, adding new features, doing SEO, doing more promotion. They want to keep investing. They, they, they don't see it as a once and done project. They see it as something that they're going to invest in to grow their business. Yeah, it never is a website as a, as a life <laughs> itself. Uh, otherwise, maybe, I don't know, maybe you just, you, maybe you just, you just, can print a piece of paper and put that on a wall. <laughs> I think yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. Same in that case. Yeah. So, okay, what is this? Oh. Uh, perfect. Pratamesh, yeah, I gave you a donation, I believe, as I well. Know. Thank you. This is a donation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pratamesh. Thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate both of you. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, Nat, since I'm an introvert, I need that list. Uh, 10 minutes to recharge my battery, my introverted batteries before the next live stream. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I, I'll sleep. I need to get yeah. a coffee before before the, the, the turn. Right. So uh, let's wrap it up. If you want to leave a final message to people, but I see that this is really a very interesting topic. Uh, if we can do a Twitter space about this, we can still collaborate with that. Uh, I love your style. Uh, I love everything about you. So, yeah, let's close. Let's close this with a final message for people who maybe they want to get started with freelancing, and then we we say hi, we say bye. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thanks everybody for coming. And I think, uh, yeah, if you want to get started, I'd, I'd say pick a pick a skill. It doesn't have to be WordPress. Um, it could be Webflow. It can be marketing. It could be anything. And try to learn it well and try to market that particular uh, skill that you have. And uh, yeah, don't don't get discouraged. Like Francesco said and everybody else in the beginning, it's hard. So, you know, it's it's really hard to get started and get a few, um, you know, clients when you're starting out. But um, once you do it, um, you know, the sky's the limit. So you can just keep going. So, yeah, thanks for listening. And it's been a pleasure for me as well, Francesco, talking to you in person finally. So, yeah, yeah, finally, almost in person. I'm just uh, I'm just yeah. disappointed for just one small thing. I, I would like to see you more on YouTube or the content creation because <laughs> you look very natural. You could do, do, do just ding, ding, even if you do this just for fun, I think it will get way, way more traction, even on Twitter, small videos. I don't know. This is yeah, just uh, sure. my, my only little dis disappointment thing that I'm really bit yes, disappointed. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I have course. to do more of that for sure. It's just never enough time, you know? <laughs> I know. I, I always say to you that at least at 26 hours. That would really yes. be ridiculous. It would be, be great. <laughs> will change our day. Yeah, bye. Yeah, for bye. sure. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Hey, bye, Francesco. Bye, Pratamesh. Bye. Shawan, it reads, so it's true. See Thank you, you Francesca and Nat, Mohammed. Yeah, this is great. See you on Twitter, Nat. Uh, thank you for your... Thanks, Perfect. everybody. Perfect. Thank you, Nat. See you next time. I hope we'll collaborate in the future. Bye-bye. Of course. Yeah, bye, bye.